subjectively I can tell you that I really enjoy shooting with a dot uh, more than I do with irons. You would expect me to say that because I work for a red dot company. So um, first of all, it's my job to sell you red dots. And second of all, a guy who likes shooting red dots would, of course, want to work for a red dot company. But let's quantify it. Um, I'm going to shoot back to back uh, on the timer. Let's put a number on it. This is a plate rack at 15 yards with 8 inch plates. I'm going to do it once with a dot and then I'm going to do it once with iron sights and we will, I'll write down my results and we'll see if I'm actually faster or better with a dot or with iron sights. I'm going to run this with six rounds per run which means if I miss a shot I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to try to make it up and I'm just going to put down that I missed. So my hits really need to count. I don't know how I'm going to penalize myself on the misses yet. There's a couple ways I can work it. Um, or I could just take my time and not miss and let the chips fall where they may. We're going to find out. I'm going to do it live. This is not going to be a bunch of takes and then I show you the best. It's going to be a bunch of takes and I show you the whole damn thing. So strap in. Alright, this is my first run with the dot. Uh, I'm going to do this from the low ready so we take out the variable of, uh, of draw and grip. Um, I don't want these results to be skewed based on how good my draw was each time because my draw might be inconsistent. So I'm just going to start from the low ready, low ready and forget the holster work on this. Alright, Leroy Jenkins. Wow, that was terrible. And you're going to get to see it because I promise. Uh, so I've got two misses. 5.22 and two misses. Okay, that was better. Ground the gun. Four, nine, three, and no misses. All right, changed up my camera angle a little bit. This is round three, round number three. One miss. All right. Today's video is brought to you by Powerade. Powerade Zero. The official drink of not passing out while shooting at a shooting range in Texas summers. So when I'm shooting this plate rack, this is basically what I'm seeing. My camera doesn't replicate all the properties of the human eye exactly, but this is a pretty fair representation of the sight picture when you're looking through a Gideon optic. This is a Gideon Alpha with a 27 millimeter wide window. It's, I would call it a medium size window. It's not the largest one we make, it's not the smallest one we make. Uh, it's got a 65 MOA ring surrounding a 3 MOA dot in the middle in red, obviously. We also make these in green for you. You can see that my co-witness uh, iron sights in this particular setup are pretty darn tall. They do obstruct uh, quite a bit of the window, um, but I still have plenty of window to work with. And you can see that I have really good situational awareness here. I can see the plate rack that I'm trying to hit. I can see a little bit below it, even with the, uh, the front sight kind of in the way. You can see I painted that front sight green to contrast with the red of the dot. Uh, but I have good situational awareness here. You know, you see these still pictures and you see diagrams when people are teaching newbies how to shoot and then we talk about sight picture. But really it's not sight picture. Really what you get is a sight movie, which here I come up from the low ready and it's always going to wiggle around, right? It's going to move and wobble and that can be disconcerting for um, new shooters who aren't used to the dot. They're like, oh my god, it's not holding still. Well, your iron sights don't really hold still either. But because you're target focused and you can see a little bit better and you have better situational awareness, you become more aware of how much wiggle there really is. And what you have to learn is there's an acceptable wiggle zone. You know, when I come up from low ready here, no, don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot, break the shot. Anywhere in here I can break the shot and get a hit, right? So there's an acceptable amount of wobble and wiggle that you have to be okay with 
and break your shots anyway and you will get hits. That's what shooting with a red dot optic is all about. One miss. Hard not to make it up. Four, three, eight. I should probably slow down a little bit. Okay, this is the fifth and final run with the dot. Boy, that second to last one just doesn't want to go. It's because I relaxed my grip just a little bit. 4.7 and one miss. Okay, so that was five runs with the dot. I had an average time of 4.73 with a total of five misses, which means I need to practice more. Now it's time for me to shoot my iron sight gun. And here's the iron sight gun. It's a Smith & Wesson K frame from the 1970s. Uh, I got you. I'm, I'm just messing with you. Had you go in there for a second, didn't I? Okay, right, so here is the dot gun. Make sure it's pointed in a safe direction before you pull that trigger to disassemble a Glock. And same frame, same trigger, same ergonomics. The only difference is now I'm running the factory slide instead of the Patmos slide. And I've got Trigicon HD night sights on here because I can't stand the plastic ball in a bucket. Not my thing. So even on the iron sight setup, I've got a small upgrade. Here we go. Everything's going to be exactly the same except iron sights instead of dot. Let's do it. Now, if anything, I've given the iron sight gun the advantage here because I've already done this five times in a row with the dot gun, so I'm kind of warmed up, right? Um, I've kind of gotten used to the move, the movement, the transitions, the cadence. Uh, I haven't gone to like eat lunch and come back later. I thought about doing something like that to break it up to where, uh, screw it. Um, it's hot. Let's just do it live. So this is right after the last take that you saw. Uh, with no break at all, I'm warmed up from shooting the dot gun, which means I should be shooting the iron sight gun uh, better than I would if I was shooting it cold. Ugh. You know, I probably just jinxed myself, right, by saying that? Let's do it. Man, oh man. That fifth plate. Fall down. Run two. It's me against that fifth plate. This time it's personal. Well, or not. Time. 5, 14, and 2 misses. Okay, this is run 3 with iron sights. Run 3 with iron sights. I'm using this view. You can't see the plates. You just have to listen and trust me on it. I like this view because I can look at my recoil control and see how flat I'm shooting this gun or how much flip I'm getting with it. So I diagnose myself with these kind of videos pretty often. Here we go. My first clean run with, uh, dot, with iron sights, 5-3-0, 5-3-0, and a clean run, that fifth, they all fell down, dang it, they all fell down. Earlier I showed you my sight picture through the Gideon optics, so let's do the same thing with the Trigicon iron sights real quick. As far as iron sights go, these Trigicons are pretty much state of the art. There's a wide U-notch in the back, and the front sight is narrower than the factory Glock front sight, so it's easy to get equal height, equal light, as they say, and get a little bit more situational awareness uh, with a narrower front sight. It's narrow and tall and has that nice insert in it. Nevertheless, I think you can tell that there's less situational awareness here. Uh, the Glock slide, the rear sight, even the front sight, is covering up a lot more of the target area than the window of the Gideon Alpha did. <sighs> I don't know if I would break this shot or not. You can see in this picture that um, my front sight is down a little bit. It's it's underneath 
the height of my rear sights. It's also off to the right a little bit. There's a good chance that with this sight picture, I'm going to pull low right. Um, it's just not as forgiving as a red dot is. And I'll show you the movie too. Once again, we don't really get a sight picture in real life. We get something more like this. That's a sight movie. I come up from the low ready, and there it is, and it's kind of wobbling and wiggling around. And you can see that it's just, it obstructs the thing that I'm shooting at. I don't really get to be, even if I'm target focused and I'm letting the sights be fuzzy and I'm trying to focus on the thing I'm shooting at, there's just more crap in the way with iron sights than there is with a dot. And that is my favorite thing about shooting with a dot is that I get to see the thing that I'm shooting at as I break the shot. I don't have to cover it up with a piece of metal. All right, my fourth run with the iron sights. Wow, you. Mm. Ooh. Uh, five, nine, one, and two misses. Five, nine, one, and two misses. Uh, gun started to torque a little left in my hand, and so I had to correct it. Uh, ooh, that was ugly. Sorry, guys. Okay, guys, last run. Run number five with iron sights, and then we're done, and we'll see what we come up with. For the glory of the Empire! Oh! It looked good! Everything looked good! Why didn't you fall down? This exercise has concluded. Time, 520. It's all over but the crying. Let's tally up our scores here. This is the sheet that I used to write down my raw numbers. I'm not gonna make you read that. Let's make it easier on you. So for the Gideon Alpha, my average time was 4.73 seconds per run with a total of five misses. And you can see that my first run was my slowest and least accurate run. It was the only run that was over five seconds and I missed two of those plates. Why? Because that was a cold run. That was that was cold performance. I was not warmed up. Uh, I didn't cheat it. What you see is what you get, right? That was the first shots of the day there. With the iron sights, you can see I'm immediately significantly slower. I never managed to run uh, under five seconds. I only had one clean run with each setup, but I'm less consistent when I'm using the iron sights. My clean run on the iron sights is sandwiched in between two runs where I missed two targets each. So I'm less accurate with the iron sights, I'm less consistent, and my average time is 5.33. Uh, let's look at it another way. Exactly how much faster am I with the dot versus the iron sights? So my iron's average time is 5.33 seconds minus 4.73. That means I'm over a half second faster on average for every run uh, than I was with the iron sights. And I think about if this was in like a competition uh, scenario where I have four or five stages that I'm running and each stage has something similar to uh, the plate rack involved. You know, they'd have a lot more targets than just a plate rack, right? But let's say that each stage has something like a plate rack and I save half a second on each stage. Well. Half a second times five is two and a half seconds of better score time just by using a red dot uh, than from using iron sights. And you'll have guys that will say, well, the red dot's just for gamers, it's just for competition, you know, iron sights always work for me. Well, yeah, they work if you're okay being slower. They work if you're okay being less consistent. They work if you're okay with struggling a little bit more with accuracy at a distance. Yeah, iron sights work fine. They've always worked for me too, but a red dot works better. Do it another way, working out the percentage, I'm over 10% uh, faster. I'm 11.3% faster today on a really hot day in Texas, and I was more accurate when using the Gideon Alpha on a Glock with everything else being equal. Before I end the video, I want to show you one more thing. I checked my zero with both Glock slides ahead of time and inadvertently demonstrated another reason why I prefer optics to iron sights. 
You can see that the mechanical accuracy with both slides is pretty similar with this 147 grain blazer brass ammo, but I have the Gideon Alpha circle dot reticle dialed in really well. Four out of five bullets went into the 10 ring at 15 yards, which is about as good as I can shoot in 100 degree weather. The group size with the iron sights is just a little bit bigger because the front sight isn't such a fine point of aim, but group size is still very acceptable. The problem is that I can't fine tune my point of impact at all. I'm shooting just a touch high and left with this ammo. Drifting the rear sight over just enough to correct the horizontal point of impact an inch or two at 15 yards is a huge frustration. Believe me, I've been there, done that, I got the t-shirt. As far as the groups being high too, there's really nothing that can be done at all, not with these sights. And then what happens if I buy a different case of ammo? Let's say instead of Blazer 147s, I find some Magtech 115 grain ammo on sale and I buy a couple of cases of that. The point of impact will be a little bit different. Different bullet weight, different velocity, right? With the Gideon Alpha, I can just re-zero at one MOA per click and it'll probably take me 10 or 15 rounds to get it totally right. With the iron sights, I'm either stuck with whatever happens, or I can play the game of trying to drift the rear sight by an impossibly small amount all over again. If you're looking for maximum accuracy, especially as distance increases, a dot sight really does matter. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.